to everyone this morning. You know, New Year is a time of a uh, period of our lives where we make certain commitments and certain uh, promises and certain goals that we uh, intend to uh, fulfill. And I, and I wish every one of you um, a particularly uh, a goal-oriented uh, effort in that area. One of the things I want to mention is this, that um, forget not the assembly of the saints. Uh, I know sometimes, as Sissy Vicky mentioned, that it's okay good to have a YouTube and worship at home, but there comes a time when you have to come into the church with the saints, because it doesn't say, when I see the Lord, when we march, when I march, it says, when we all get to heaven. It's not an individual thing. Come and join us. And for those who are listening at home, uh, this message is particularly for you. I know sometimes there are situation or circumstances that requires you to be there. But come on in. Let us see you again, and especially for the new year. And I pray that you'll fulfill your goals, and I want you to finish the race, fight the good fight, and so that you will say to yourself, I have done all that I could have done in this life. And one more thing, I would just ask uh, that whatever commitment you have made for yourselves, uh, make sure if there's a moment in your life where you say to yourself, I want to do more for the Lord. Yeah. I want to do more for the church. Yeah. Help me, Lord, to fulfill that commitment that is in my heart. Yeah. We're not getting any younger. It's 30 years now since this church has been in existence. So put on, put on your, your boots and, and suit up for work in the vineyard. And at the end of the day, you'll be mightily blessed. Amen? At this time, I'm going to now turn the rest of the service over to the praise and worship team. May the Lord bless you and bless them as they minister us in music. Amen. Um, the time, you know, when Pastor said that he's been in our praise and worship class, I could tell he was very excited um, for today. Amen? Amen. Um, oh, piggyback in a little bit. This is my first Sunday here of the year. My family and I would like to wish everyone a happy new year. And we pray that God continue blessings will be upon us. I said to my, a friend of mine, I don't make new year resolutions, but this year I just want to be a better version of me through Jesus Christ who gives me the strength. Amen? Amen. 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 So this morning we are going to rejoice. I mean, sometimes we come to church and when we look down here, people are just like this. But this morning we're going to dance. We're going to praise. 30 years is enough to give God thanks and praises for. In Matthew 16 verse 18 says, upon, he told Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Amen. We are the church. We are the church. We have hands. We have feet. We have a voice. And you know, listen, 2023 has just started and I'm already hearing of deaths. Young people, old people, the in-betweens, anybody. We are here. We give God praise. We give God thanks. And we give him back what is due to him. Amen? Amen. I wasn't there for all years, right? So this is my <laughs> testimony right now. Amen? So let's just really rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. I celebrated 30 years too, 30 years anniversary. So I know what it was. You know, so we celebrated 30 years. So let's start it off with a bang. Amen? So put your hands together. We're going to rejoice this morning.
brothers and sisters, God has been so faithful. I, 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 I don't know why the praise team chose to sing this song and then knowing that the pastor is supposed to pray afterwards. On a day like today and the singing of the song just turns me to mush. can I say? Thank you, Jesus. Let's, let's, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Lord, the psalmist says, what shall we render unto you? all your goodness and all your mercy. Lord, on this faithful day, we thank you for bringing us from the various walks of life to this place of worship. Thirty years ago, we were in diverse places. And yet, in your providence, you saw it fit to lead us to this place. Your will and your purpose determine it. And we pray that you will help us to fulfill your will and your purpose and to bring glory to your name. Not unto us, O oh Lord, but unto thy name be all glory and honor and praise. Lord, first of all, we want to thank you for those who gathered together and decided that it was your will and purpose to start to worship together. Some are here in the sanctuary, others are in other places, and some have gone on to glory. We bless their memory and their labor in the harvest field. Lord, we thank you for those who have persevered over these 30 years and upon whose shoulder this church now stands. We know you are faithful and you will render unto them according to your glorious riches. Lord, we thank you for your grace that has kept us through many dangers and trials, temptations, through failures, Lord, thank you for never giving it up on us, but always believing in us individually and corporately. Lord, truly, 
It is your grace that has brought us thus far. And it is your grace that will take us home. We pray now that you will help us. You will teach us your way so that we can walk faithfully in it. So that as Jesus tarries, those who come behind us will find us faithful. Father in heaven, on this faithful morning, we consecrate ourselves afresh. We say with the songwriter, I surrender all, all to Jesus. I surrender, I surrender all. Thank you for healing our brokenness. Thank you, God, for helping us in our human frailty. Thank you for helping this church to learn how to love one another, to forgive one another, to be patient with one another, to support one another, and even in our brokenness, to heal us so that we can truly be the people of God. We thank you for the friends of First Community. Many are watching by way of television, some in Canada, in other states, even outside this country. We thank you for their contribution, both spiritually and tangibly. Oh, how we worship you this morning. From the depths of our hearts, we give you praise. Lord, with our hands and our feet, with our voices, with every part of us, we lift up to you in adoration and praise. Now, God, remember those among us who are weak and frail. We think of Sister Muriel Kerr and ask you to attend to her this morning. She's in, she wants to go home. but she's in a nursing home. Lord, there are those who are sick, those who would love to be in the service this morning, but God, they're not well. Oh, Father, visit them, we pray. Yes. We pray that you will walk up and down inside this church family and minister to us according to our need. We will not fail to give you thanks. We will not fail to give you praise, honor, and glory. For we pray these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Good morning, church family. And what a beautiful, beautiful Lord's Day the Lord has given to us. It is beautiful outside, isn't it? And with God's people praising on the inside, it's even more beautiful. 
want to welcome you out to the house of the Lord and uh, thank God for uh, uh, those who are here and for those who are watching by way of television. We want to acknowledge your presence with us in this worship experience. And we are confident that our omnipresent God is with you and will render your blessing where you are. Amen? Amen. Well, it, it, it is a thrilling thing for me to uh, be in the service and know that uh, there, are, uh, there are folks here who were there some uh, 30 years ago. And uh, 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 this is not the, you know, the 30th anniversary service which is coming, but uh, I, I just want to let them know that uh, just being here is such a blessing. Um, we will make sure they, they are recognized and that they are honored, uh, as, you know, as we go through this celebration period. But today, I just want to let them know uh, that I am so grateful that they have stood by me in ministry through the ups and the downs and the twists and the turns. And um, uh, some of you don't know who they are, but you will, you will, you will get to know them. And so thank you, thank you so much. And um, we have uh, a presentation to make uh, in the service, and so I don't want to take up much time, but, and so I would like to ask the ushers now to lead us in our worship as we worship with our tithes and offerings. And for those of you who are watching by way of television, those of you who are here in the service who uh, place your tithe and offering online on our church website, we want to acknowledge that and want to uh, thank you for your faithfulness. I'm sure the Lord recognizes your worship offering, whether you give it here or online. And so, um, uh, ushers, please lead us. The Remembrance Table is not here for a reason, and so uh, uh, you will see later on why the Remembrance Table is not here. But come on down. seated.
I'm delighted to see Brother Merton's mom in church. As she came in, she was dancing. And we rejoice that God has allowed you to come. But there, uh, as I mentioned in my uh, prayer, a number of our seniors who were not able to come. I mentioned Sister Muriel Kerr, and there are others. And we think about them kindly at this moment and pray that God will uh, bless them and strengthen them and lift them up. But along with that, uh, Josie and Alfredo Waldron worship with us for a period of time before they uh, relocated to Florida. And word got to me this morning that Sister Josie lost a dear niece of hers. And so we want to acknowledge that and we want to uh, uh, let her know uh, of our sympathies and our prayers as a church will certainly uh, lift up the family uh, on our Tuesday, Thursday prayer time. But even before then, I just encourage each of you to remember that family. Remember also the staff family uh, yesterday of the Trevor staff uh, funeralized both his father and sister in the same service. Uh, you can imagine the impact of something like that. And, um, and uh, coming this coming Friday, I'll be preaching the homily at Bronx Bethany uh, in that uh, service uh, for Dr. Bruce Henry, uh, uh, many of you have heard of the tragedy, and so remember Sister Arlene Nemard and her family, especially this week, amen? Uh, let me just say that, uh, and you'll be reminded of it, that as we go through this year, uh, uh, we maintain a list of um, those who, whose loved one has passed, and so we ask that you call the church office and inform uh, the secretary so that uh, uh, your name or your relative's name may be recorded and um, the church can know about it. Similarly, if you want your name to go on the list for prayer because uh, you need healing, uh, uh, do call the church office. Uh, uh, in the past, we have depended on hearing through the grapevine what's going on, and then folks don't get their name on the list, and maybe we didn't know, uh, something like that. So that's how we will proceed during this year. We ask you to please call the church office. Amen? Amen. Thank you so kindly. At this time, uh, we're going to be featured with a message and song by... Sister Leanne, we pray that she'll come now and minister to us. Oh, uh, she is maybe not in the sanctuary, so we are, we'll hope that she'll come up and do that ministering. But as I mentioned earlier, uh, the, the 30th anniversary steering committee will be doing a presentation uh, uh, at the end of my, my sermon and uh, will uh, provide you with all the information that you need about what will take place in the, uh, the coming months. Uh, be some very, very good information. And so we trust that um, <clears throat> the Lord will uh, just bless them as they make that presentation. All right, Sister Leanne is here and she's ready, and uh, we're ready, and God is ready, and so uh, here she comes. Oh, oh, both of them. Oh, we have a double blessing this morning. All right. Good morning. <laughs>
When a church has young people who can sing like that and to sing that, it is a gift and a blessing from the Lord. For the sign of authentic Christian conversion. is that you hunger for more. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, as I thought about the day and thought about what God would have me say, uh, God brought me back to something I said some weeks ago about the Christian story 
Do you know that God has his own story? He does. Well, you have your story. But as I said last week, it is the intention of God that your story finds its meaning in God's story. And God's story is recorded in his word from Genesis to Revelation. And in today's busy society, it is important that people take time out to be fully acquainted with God's story. I hear people pray all the time, and they pray their story, but say nothing about God's story, and they're praying to God. Well, there's nothing wrong about praying about your story. It's your story, it's your experience. But if your story does not find some kind of a synchrony with God's story, well, it is deficient and wanting. So God has led me to the book of Revelation and to a climactic moment in the story of God. Could you stand on your feet, take your Bibles out, and turn with me to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. We'll read from verse 1 to verse 8. Stand on your feet in honor of God as we read the divinely inspired word of God. This is God's speaking, not pastor. Hear now the word of God as it is to be found in Revelation chapter 19, verse 1 to 8. After these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great war. Who's that? Which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants on her hand. And again they said, Hallelujah! And her smoke rose up forever and ever, and the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Hallelujah! And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunder, and saying, Hallelujah! For the Lord God, omnipotent, reigneth! Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. This is the word of God. You may be seated. Verse 6, for the Lord God, omnipotent, reigneth. I choose to take my title out of that verse. God, omnipotent, reigneth. Beloved James A. Garfield was born in a humble log cabin and left fatherless when he was still just an infant. From his earliest years, he was forced to work on his family's farm in Ohio. Later, he succeeded by earning enough money to help his withered mother and to put himself through college as a riverboat driver, a carpenter, and a teacher. 
His love of learning and his sharp intellect caused him to excel at teaching, ultimate landing him the position of college president. But it was in 18, it was in the 1880 Republican Convention in Chicago that he acquired his greatest achievement. There, he was nominated the Republican presidential candidate and became the 20th president of the United States. Born in humble estate, he conquered. Born in a humble estate, he conquered. He achieved and he celebrated. Conquer, celebrate. It, it, it's a marvelous theme. I love rags to riches stories, don't you? I do. A story where the powerless win over the powerful. I'm sure you have keen interest in what's going on in the Ukraine as this ragtag group of Ukrainians are pushing back on the big and powerful Russians. God's story in the Bible is about the ultimate vindication of weak, broken humanity who in Christ has conquered and engaged in a cosmic celebration in their union with Christ our Savior. The Bible calls it the marriage feast of the Lamb. And every believer must be acquainted with the marriage feast of the Lamb part of God's story. We must know the beginning in Genesis. We must know the middle of God's people described as the Israelites going through the wilderness and then into the promised land. We must know God's story in the New Testament, the coming of Christ, his teachings, his crucifixion, his resurrection and ascension. But we must also know how the story ends. Come on, church. Amen. Can't know part of the story. And this part of the story is especially important in this day and age. And I'll tell you why in a minute. So the story is about the powerless people of God and the powerful plan of God. I'm sure you can recall times in your life when evil seems to have had the upper hand and you wonder, where is God? Where is God? And some would even wonder, is there a God? You know, even in the Bible, we find situations where God seemed to be so weak or absent. This can bring us great discouragement. Consider these four documented situations in the Word of God. In Exodus chapter 5, verse 2, we read, And Pharaoh said to Moses, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, nor will I let Israel go. Where? Secondly, in 1 Samuel 4, verse 10, we read, So the Philistines fought, and Israel, that's God's people, Israel was defeated and every man fled to his tent and the slaughter was very great 
for there fell of Israel 30,000 foot soldiers. God's people, we're, we're reading about God's people being vanquished. Where is God? We jump over into New Testament, Matthew 24, verse 41 and 43. We read, In the same way, the chief priests, scribes, and elders mocked him, that is Jesus, saying, He trusts in God. Let God deliver him. Now, if he wants him, for he said, ha, 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 I'm a son of God. This is Jesus on the cross being mocked. Where is God? And then, fourthly, Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 8, verse 1 and verse 3. On the day of Stephen's death, and Stephen was the first Christian martyr in the book of Acts. A great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Saul began to destroy the church. Mm. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. There's nothing that they could do about it, and there was nothing that their God was doing about it. Where is God? You know, the apologetic of the atheists, their reasoning and rationalization about stuff like this, goes something like this. If God exists, he is either unkind or powerless. Either God is powerless over evil, or God is not as loving as we think he is. And when you're going through it, when you're crying out to God, when pain and suffering is licking your shut, you begin to wonder whether the atheists are right. I mean, if you're going to keep it real. Because you need help. And you need it now. And help don't seem to be coming. But what we find in the book of Revelation is an answer to that question, is a solution to that dilemma. For if you read Revelation and you read up to chapter 16, into chapter 17, you find that God's judgment is poured out on evil. I mean, poured out, poured out, poured out. Uh, you know, you wonder about whether some people get away with stuff. Hmm, well, it, they may get away with it for a while. But there's a catching up day coming. You know, you often hear people on the steps of the courthouse coming out, and they didn't like the, the verdict of, of the, uh, the jury or the sentence of the judge made, and they said, we're going to appeal because we want justice. Etc., 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 because they didn't think it was fear. Well, the judge of all the earth will have the last word. The judge of all the earth will have the last word.
And in Revelation chapter 16 and 17, man, the imagery of Revelation. Re Revelation is what is called apocalyptic literature. It, 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 it is filled with drama. It is filled with imagery and, 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 and some stuff that you can't rationalize because it's, it's trying to bring impact. But then, you move from God's judgment into chapter 19 and 20. We read the first eight verses of chapter 19. Let's go back there. Chapter 19. Well, let's just read chapter 17, verse 1. In chapter 17, verse 1, it's as if God beckons us. He says, come and I will show you the judgment of the great whore. And evil is, 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 is personified as a great whore. And scholars will tell you that the description here of, of Babylon, the great whore, is, is a way of talking about Rome in particular. And evil Babylon of history and also every evil system that exists then and exists now. Babylon. Rastaman used to cry down, Babylon! Babylon is going to fall. Rastaman get it from this section of the Bible. And Rastaman believe in the ultimate judgment of Babylon. And believers ought to agree with the Rastaman that Babylon will fall. You have to believe that. Because that's part of God's story. And when you make your story part of God's story, you have hope. Because Babylon will not only fall objectively, but Babylon will fall subjectively in your life. Babylon will fall for you. And every weapon formed against you, every evil, every evil person, every evil deed is part of what Babylon is doing against you. And you have to join the Rastaman and declare that Babylon will fall. You just trust God. Trust God's word. Believe. Hope. And have a Christian perspective. That no matter what is happening in the world, Babylon must fall. And so moving from chapter 17, verse 1, where we are called... <coughs> Come and I will show you the judgment of the great whore. We go over to chapter 18, verse 2. Where the powerful plan of God is in view. Chapter 18. Chapter 18. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great, is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and caged of every unclean and hateful bird. This is describing, beloved, in personification terms, the demise of Eve, the conquering 
of evil. Conquer. There are other images in Revelation where our Savior go from conquering unto conquer. But this here, in sequence to the judgment of God, is where Babylon not only fall, but is conquered. Conquered. And Rome as an evil system was being referred to here, and we see historically that Rome eventually fell. It's part of the powerful plan of God. Empires, beloved, no matter how great and extensive they are, are dated. You know, at one time, the British Empire was so great that the sun never set on the British Empire. That's how large it was. It's no more. No more. Russia is trying to regain empire. But it's dated. But all that brings us to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19, in verse 6 and verse 8. For the, in the great plan of God is not only a plan to conquer, but also a plan for celebration. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let me pause here for a minute because it, 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 it <clears throat> there are some dimensions to this. For the Lord God is affirmed here that God is. In the book of Hebrews we're told that he that cometh unto God must believe that he is. Must believe in the isness of God. And that he's a rewarder. <clears throat> of everyone that diligently seek him. But this not only tell us about the Lord God, it tells us that he's omnipotent. Now when you use the word omnipotent, there's nothing else beyond omnipotent. He's all-powerful. So the seeming weakness of God that we saw coming out of Pharaoh's court all the way up to the crucifixion of Jesus was allowed by God for God's purpose. It does not mean that God is weak. It means that the time for him to display his power had not yet come. Now it's important for us to understand that and have that perspective because when we go through stuff, and we call upon God, and God is seemingly weak or absent, we must take a step back and say, maybe I don't understand God's plan. And maybe I ought to say like Jesus, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass away. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And submit to the will of God. You see, in, in my story, I want what I want. In your story, you want what you want. But if your story is going to become God's story, then you have to submit to the will of God. Like Job, who said, though he slay me, finish it. Yet will I trust him. Woo! <laughs> Job, though the pain licking my shot, yet will I trust him. That's Christian. That's authentic Christianity. Not this, you know, name it and claim it thing. 
and believe that, um, you know, it is not God's will that you should be, you know. Thank you, my brother. It's not God's will. Or it, it, it's God's will that you should be healthy, wealthy all the time. That's garbage. That's garbage. That's merely fulfilling your own selfish desires. But Jesus says, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. So there is this conquering and there is this celebration. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and the wife has made herself ready. And who is the wife? The church has made herself ready. The church is to be glad. The church is to rejoice. And so today, Today, as we come to this 30th anniversary celebration, just know that this is a practice for the real thing. The real thing is coming. The real celebration is coming. And you ought to keep that in mind. Because if you keep that in mind, then when the rough time comes, you'll say, well, we'll wait upon the Lord. Amen? Amen. The Lord, God, omnipotent, reigneth. The Lord reigns. The Lord is reigning right now. I don't know what's going on with you or what uh, uh, adversity you're facing, but the Lord reigneth now. And we wait until that day when all heaven will rejoice. Say the Lord omnipotent reigns. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm going to call the anniversary committee to come and join me. The steering committee to come and join me here on the platform and do their presentation. Do their presentation and share with us what we can expect in the days ahead in 2023. Here is our co-leader, Sister Elaine Williams. God bless you. Good afternoon, church family. Good afternoon. It is indeed a pleasure to stand here on behalf of our 30th anniversary committee to introduce to, to you today the 30th anniversary committee. I am tasked with chairing the committee along with Sister Nicole Filene, who is not here. And I just want to extend to you on her behalf as well the pleasure and the absolute joy and um, it's such an honor that the board and pastor has granted us this opportunity to be a part of this 30th year. You know, um, some people celebrate their birthday in a day. We are thanking God for this opportunity where we will be celebrating the birth of this church, the 30th birthday of this church for a whole year. And we, we, are, we are excited. We are excited and we want you to be excited. And so today we stand here as the team, the committee, and we want to just give you a little bit of insight on the year that we have planned. And so today I want to introduce to you my team, the committee 
who will be um, planning the year. We'll be working together to plan the year. We have started the work. And so this is the committee. And so committee members, I want you to introduce yourself and just to give a little insight as to what your roles are and what you will be doing as far as that portion of what your role will represent on the committee. Good morning again. Good morning. As you know, um, I'm Sister Vicky, as uh, they call me. <laughs> and I am charged with leading the journal, putting together the journal. Now, in the 20th anniversary and for the 25th anniversary, we produced these two beautiful journals. And many of you may still have um, them. Um, so this year, we want to do a 30th anniversary journal. Of course, you know, to produce a quality journal, it takes work. On this committee, so far, we have Sister Carol Wallace and Sister Janelle Va Valespes. And I'm making appeal to the church to join us. I am especially appealing to the young adults who may have far better computer sp skills than I have. <laughs> We're going to need folks to help in the soliciting of ads, work with the printers, editing, proofreading, getting the word out on various media platforms. So, as they say on Shark Tank, who would like to join the journal team on this great venture? Please see me after the service or send me an email, call, or just see me in person. Please join us on the journal team. We want um, this to be done this week, so if you can give me a call this week, I really appreciate that. God bless you. So, Sister Andrea and I, look forward, Sister Elke, <laughs> we are the representation of the committee for the gala, the day of the gala. So, the gala is on October 7th. The gala is on October 7th, 2023, at the VIP Country Club in New Rochelle. And it's from 11.30 in the morning to 4 p.m. Our responsibilities include the program, the awards, the decoration, tickets, table assignment, whatever happens on the day of the gala. So we have some members already in the church who already agreed to be part of that committee. Like Sister Vicky said, we welcome anyone else who wants to join us. And um, we look forward to seeing everyone here at the gala on October when? Yes. What time? Yes. Where? Yes. Thank you, Sister Andrea and Louise. I think we're ready for the, I think they're ready for us. Yes, yes, yes. So as Sister um, Susan says, we're part of the gala team, but I'm here today actually representing Sister Nicole, um, who's also who's co-chair with Sister Elaine. Unfortunately, she's a little under the weather, so she couldn't be here today. So I'm going to talk about um, the, the launch letter, the invitation letter that um, all the members should have received hopefully by now. It went out to all members of First Community Church and friends of First Community and, no? Just members for now, okay. So it just went to members. So hopefully everybody would have gotten it in the mail by now. And with the letter, it also included the copy of the calendar for the, the church, the 2023 calendar year. Um, and, and so on the invitation letter, it highlighted some of the main events that we were going to be putting on or having for the 30th anniversary year um, celebration. Um, and just to highlight a few that was on the letter, um, for instance, um, we're going to be having um, a fundraiser, 30 for 30, which you'll be hearing more for, um, about in a little bit. Um, it's going to be an evangelistic service. Friday, July 21st through the 23rd, which we'll hear more about. And obviously, um, 
culminating in the gala, which Sister Susan um, noted on the 7th, then officially the church anniversary service on October 15th, on that Sunday. Um, so we just want to also highlight that the calendar, everything that happens this year in the 30th year of the church, all the events that will be happening is going to be under the banner of the 30th anniversary committee. So whatever events that take place, this will be noted as a 30th anniversary celebration. Um, so and um, as you all see, we're all, we're all wearing t-shirts. Um, our color for the year, 30th year, is the color is green for the 30 year anniversary. So we're green and gold. So as you see, we're all wearing green and gold t-shirts, which will be for sale. And we'll have some samples downstairs later when we have a little refreshment. Um, I think the price is $20. So we're asking everybody and you know, all the members to make sure they get their t-shirts. Um, and um, so then obviously the theme for the full year, it's highlighted on our shirts, founded on faith, inspired by hope. Um, so we want everybody to join us. We want everybody to get excited. We're um, blessed that God has been faithful to us these 30 years. So we just want to have a good year and hopefully everybody will be able to participate. Well, church, you know, I am Donovan Beckford and I, I you, you see, I'm probably the most fortunate man ever in this church because I end up serving with some of the most powerful women <laughs> and they motivate and correct and, you know, straighten me along the way. So they've made my 30th anniversary committee experience a real, a real blessing. And you know, I'm not even sure quite what my responsibilities are, except that uh, for this, the purpose of this uh, launch, you know, I just want to recognize, I know Sister Andrea mentioned that all the ministers of the church and the activities that they're going to be doing this year will become 30th anniversary activities. I am t you probably know this, and I'm just repeating it, that our ministries really make this church. They reach out and they evangelize and they reach out to the community. And they, this year, as we celebrate our 30th anniversary, will roll everything that they do into these celebrations. And we're looking forward to it. At, at the risk of me leaving out any ministry, I'm just going to say all our ministries and all the activities that they will um, deliver this year will be a part of our 30th anniversary. Can we give them a round of applause, guys, for the work they've done and the work they're going to be doing this year? This year, you heard Sister Andrea mention, it's in the letter that you may have received already, that we're doing an evangelistic service or a series of services on the weekend of July 21st. I know it's going to be the summertime, and it's the time that most of us tend to take our vacation. But we want you to mark the calendar as Friday, July 21st through the 23rd. That week is going to be a weekend of just joyous celebration, singing, and praising and worshiping God. And there is a group of uh, your, uh, your fellow members and friends who are working on this, and they're putting every effort into it, and you're going to be hearing about it um, as we move forward. So... The evangelistic service this year is going to be held out in our churchyard. It's going to involve all our ministries, the message, the music, and the connection. You can be sure that God's will is going to be done through First Committee. So we invite you. We're looking. If you want to work with us on that committee, just put your hand up. We'll take you. And we're going to make that committee, um, the production of that committee, something that will be a blessing to God in our 30th year. Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer Glenn and I'm the secretary, so I'm the one that takes the minutes. So I go to all the meetings through Zoom and put everything in a Word document, make sure everything is, you know, written down properly and, you know, making sure that's sent out to the entire steering committee so that, you know, there's no miscommunication and everything has been, you know, well said. And that's pretty much my position. So I'm very blessed to be around people that are so passionate um, and you know that show up every meeting, like regardless of how busy they are, because we're all busy. 
So to me, it's, you know, it really motivates you. Like sometimes I'm like five minutes late. And so it's like things like that where you're like, these people are very motivated, very dedicated. So I think, you know, this is gonna be a great year. So I'm very honored to be around this committee. So that's about it. Thank you, thank you committee. So um, there was mention of a portion of this year and I'm gonna ask brother Michael Espinel to come forward and just speak a little bit about this 30 for 30 fundraiser that's gonna be a part of our um, year. Thank you, Sister Lorraine, uh, Elaine. Well, thank you, church. Um, well, the colors that you see displayed are just the colors. The colors that you see displayed are just the colors. They stand for no political party whatsoever. <laughs> I just want to make sure we get that <laughs> straightened out. <laughs> uh, church anniversaries are, are very special because they place us in a position of reflection. And as mentioned, this is First Community Church of Nazarene's 30th anniversary. This is what the Bible says. Uh, about celebration in Philippians 4. It says, be cheerful with joyous celebration in every season of life. Let your joy overflow and let gentleness be seen in every relationship. For our Lord is ever near. Don't be pulled different in directions or worried about a thing. 30 years. 30 years. Now, as part of this uh, 30th year celebration, uh, 3030 Fundraising Committee has been formed. Uh, the members of the committee, some of you, have, some of whom you have met, uh, Brother Donovan, Sister Hamlet, uh, and Brother Jeffrey Anderson, who's also a part of the committee, and myself, Michael Aspinall. And the committee is really tasked with the mission of generating $15,000 to help with the project that I will speak on. And so here's how it works. We're asking that each church member reach out to friends, family members, well wishers to donate $30 towards this campaign for our other personal network that you might have. And the use of the funds uh, will be used for strengthening and the expansion of our ministries, including enhancement of several aspects of our church's uh, infrastructure, which includes the following. As you know, as you come into the church, we don't have one of those uh, gate barriers that sometimes people come in and out of our property and circle and that sort of thing. Yeah, tractor trailers, in fact. And they use our parking lot as a U-turn. Uh, so we want a, a gate to be placed there. In addition to that, we are going to be making some uh, repainting and cosmetic improvements to the church building. I don't believe that the church, oh, Pastor, when was the last time the church was painted? Uh, it was probably several years ago. But nonetheless, I don't think it has ever been. So we, as part of that celebration, we're going to do that. And we also want to acquire a tent for outdoor ministries. In the past, we have rented them. In, but this time, we want a more, we want a tent that we own so we can put it up during the spring, summer, and winter months. And uh, we'll be having all types of activities with the use of that tent. I want to share with you uh, one thing. Uh, this project uh, will cost approximately $30,000. Uh, but we were blessed with a generous donor who has, from the, a member of the church, who has already placed $15,000 towards that goal. Thank you. That anonymous donor has really been stepped up. And you know, even before we began, the Lord was in it, and we bless that member. And again, it was basically inspired by the idea uh, that there should be not any burden, if you will, on any church members to fulfill the goal of raising that fund. So this is how it works. We're going to ask that uh, each member 
of our congregation uh, 10 tickets, if you will, and to ask your friends and family members to pay $30 uh, per that contribution. And um, we will have uh, an in-gathering as the campaign uh, progresses. So on March 5th will be our first in-gathering, and on April 2nd will be our second gathering, and on May 7th, the final reporting. What this in-gathering means is simply that you will bring in all the collections that you've acquired those in between those months and make that presentation. So we, the committee, will have an idea as to where we stand with the donation. Now, you can uh, donate online uh, at the church's website, which is uh, www.firstcommunitynas.org. Uh, you go to the Given tab and you can donate. All the instructions are there, very uh, user-friendly in that regard. If there are other members uh, of the church who is not a part of this committee who wishes to join us, uh, please let us know. Uh, the old saying is, many hands make what? Uh, indeed. And so we want to expand our mission. So we want to thank everyone for their anticipated participation in this noble uh, mission. And may the Lord continue to bless us as we are able to do so. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Brother Mike. At this time, we're going to ask Pastor to join us. And we are now going to unveil our 30th anniversary banner. banner. All right. Let's see what this banner looks like. For the celebration, founded on faith, inspired by hope. Inspired by hope that we will all be there at the banquet feast of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. To celebrate the ultimate celebration. Um, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Colossians 2 verse 7 is a key verse. And so isn't it beautiful? Amen. Amen. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, I, I think on behalf of the church, uh, we want to thank this committee for all the work, all the meetings, uh, that uh, has taken place for the planning. And I think, uh, church, that we have a solid foundation on which to go forth into this year uh, uh, to celebrate all that God has done in and through this church so far. I just want to add to something Brother Mike said. Uh, that we are careful, and the person who made the donation was careful to communicate that uh, we ought not to put burden on the church for you to come up with, you know, uh, money uh, to feel burdened when you're going to have to buy gala tickets and maybe a dress to go to the gala and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we do expect a church member to make a donation to the 30th anniversary fund. That's just reasonable, you know. Um, <clears throat> but it is the expectation that uh, your friends, your relatives, your co-workers would want to make a donation to your church at this very special time. And so that's where we hope that there'll be the in-gathering uh, coming from, from our friends, our relatives, our co-workers. And there are many people who have been blessed by this church who are not members and they don't even come to church here. They we want to know about our fundraiser, and we want to make a, a $30 donation. Amen? Yeah. Okay, amen. So that's the thought underneath it. So we want you to be free to celebrate. Amen? Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. 
And you know, we're going to close off the service with um, a celebrative song that lifts up the majesty of our Lord. And so I'm going to ask you to, what number is it? 122. 122. Get a hymnal, go to 122. Oh, there it is up on the monitor. Yeah. And I was just reminded that there are refreshments downstairs afterward, so don't run out. Join with us downstairs. The celebration begins. how many times the word hallelujah was in verse 1 to verse 8 in Revelation 19. Hallelujah! 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 It rings out in heaven and it resounds in the earth when we come to understand that our Christian faith is leading to a great crescendo. Some folks think that going to New Year's at, 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 at um, Times Square is a big thing. You know? Nothing compare. Nothing compare. Fourth of July celebration, nothing compare. It's literally out of this world. It's cosmic. Let us pray. Gracious God, Thank you for this worship experience today. Thank you for a taste of the glory that is to come. Now gladden our hearts, especially in the days ahead, so that we may celebrate in a manner that will be pleasing to you for all that you've done. But even more than that, to celebrate Looking forward to the marriage feast of the Lamb. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Be 
these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please remain standing as I exit the platform. Thank you.